Next up, I'd like to introduce Mark Atkins. So Mark was diagnosed with myeloma about 12 months ago now, almost to the date, he was saying. Um, he's certainly had a, an interesting journey um, and transplant now about was it seven, seven, or, seven or eight, eight months, months ago. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, uh, Mark's journey's not been an easy one, uh, to, to put it mildly. So just to, as a bit of a disclaimer, please don't expect to... Uh, sort of go through everything that Mark perhaps <laughs> yeah. has, but I think sometimes it's wonderful just to hear from someone who's been there, done it, come out the other side, is getting back into life, and uh, you know it makes it makes a huge difference. So I'd um, just like to thank Mark for coming along. I know it's not always easy to get up and speak in front of a room full of people, particularly about something that's so personal and something you've undergone yourself. Um, so we thank you very much for, for coming along, and I'll I'll leave you matter away. Yeah. Um, I'm Mark, I'm 48 years old, um, and uh, 12 months ago I was diagnosed with chronic kidney failure and multiple myeloma. I say it that way because the chronic kidney failure was discovered first. I um, was suffering from cramps, I hadn't really paid much attention to them, I was getting cramps in my legs, my wife was getting annoyed, I was waking up in the middle of the night with cramps. She asked me to go down and do a blood test, went down and did a blood test, and uh, I got a phone call actually very early in the morning, which is very unusual from your local GP. It was about 7, 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning, asking me to come down to the Ipswich Hospital. We were living on property at the time. And uh, I got down to the Ipswich Hospital and they did some tests and they said that my um, kidneys were failing rapidly. Um, I hadn't noticed. I know I'd been a bit lethargy, you know, a bit tired, a bit lazy, um, but that was the only effect that I had. Um, so they booked me straight into the hospital, kept me there for five days up in Ipswich, trying to figure out why my kidneys were failing so rapidly. They brought me down to the PA hospital in um, Brisbane. Um, I was there a couple of hours, did some um, blood tests. They called me into an office and, and said, we know why your kidneys are failing. You have multiple myeloma. And uh, from that point on, um, my kidneys started crashing very rapidly. And so they put me into the hospital. I was put onto a, um, a trial drug that they were using at the time called Velcade, um, which was a new on the market. It was a new drug. It's um, having very good success rate with um, a lot of patients, but it um, didn't work for me. They tried it for a week or two. It, hadn't, it wasn't touching the sides of my myeloma. Um, they went straight in for um, stem cell. So in, in the meantime, my kidneys failed a lot worse. I had a catheter put in. I um, was in the hospital. I was doing um, hemodialysis three times a week, four hours a day. And they crashed so bad that I ended up on the machines eight hours a day. And with special filters, they were flying in from New Zealand at $4,000 a filter, mind you. And um, they kept me on that for eight days, managed to um, get the stuff they needed out of my kidneys. And um, I went back to the normal regime of four a day, every day, four hours a day. And uh, we carried on like that. Now, when we got to the stem cell transplant, because of the um, kidney failure, I um, couldn't have large doses of chemo and I couldn't have like, any um, large doses of painkillers. So. The stem cell in itself wasn't um, too good the first time they tried. And they, they had a go at getting stem cells out of me. I did the um, in injections and we tried to collect harvest. And on the first harvest, they only got a very small harvest. So um, I went back and then we did a second harvest, which was um, a very good harvest, but very painful for me. I, um, cause they couldn't give me um, any painkillers or anything like that. And I had a very bad time. I was crying a lot. I was in a lot of pain. I was curled up in a ball on the end of the bed and I had nurses rubbing my head and my back. And it was a very brutal and horrible time, you know? And, and this is not something that happens to every patient, you know, and all the nurses I've spoke to and doctors, I'm a one off. You know, they, some of the doctors have never had a patient react that way at all. You know, so it's not something that happens to everybody when they're having their um, stem cells harvest. It just happened to happen to me, you know, <laughs> as everything else does. And um, 
So they collected my stem cells, managed to get enough. I donated half of my, because they got such a large collection on the second time around, I donated half of them to the society to be used as they wished. And they managed to keep enough for two transplants for me. So um, I've had my first transplant um, and got through it and come out the other end. Um, so that's basically what happened to me. Now, the bits in between, um, we were talking at the, about um, side effects and stuff like that. Um, the, all the side effects that you could have, I did have. I, I had a rash of them, you know, I just, one thing went wrong after another for me. I ended up having 17 blood transfusions over a period of a week or so, two weeks, and because my, they couldn't get my bloods to come back up because of my kidney failure. And I also got um, adult chicken pox. So I ended up in the um, isolation wards upstairs and not a very pleasant experience, but all the way through this is, a great team of people, you know, they, they, they looked after me, they made me feel good, and as they said, the sense of humour and just the things you have to do is what counted, what, what made the difference to me, you know, they really did, you know, I, um, I had some horrible moments, I would be, I cried a lot, I was very upset, and 12 months ago I was a healthy, working, normal human being, and then all of a sudden I found myself in a hospital, plugged into machines, tubes. I've never been sick before. I've never been in a hospital before. I've never been to a dentist before in my life, um, if you could believe. And um, so this was a whole new experience for me, you know? So when I went in, and it's, it's, it's difficult to say, it's difficult to do. Um, a lot of things happen, you know? A lot of things happen really fast. And you try to ask the right questions, but they, they can't give you the right answers there and then, the answers you want. So it becomes very frustrating, you know, and you, you really want these answers, but there's just no answers they can give you. So you just have to go along and trust these people to be doing the right thing by you, you know. And some of the little tricks I learned while I was going through my stem cell was, like, to... The mouth ulcer thing and that, you know, you, that's a, a real thing amongst other patients that I noticed though when I was in there and that. I found getting a bottle of water and half filling it, put my name on it, and all the hospitals have got fridges and freezers around the wards, you know? So you can put your half bottle of water in, just on a bit of an angle like that, name on it, freeze it, and then fill it up with water, the rest of the bottle. So you've always got a supply of ice water Ice water is absolutely your best friend, I guarantee it. Either sucking on an ice block or drinking ice water. It really works and it's a really nice thing in your mouth while you're going through that because you get your sores and your mouth gets dry and it's, um, it's not a pleasant thing. But the ice water really, really helps. The other thing is, I didn't, I'm not a sort of person that eats lollies or cakes or sweet things. Um, but while I was going through my stem cell, lollies helped. <laughs> of all things, lollies helped. You know, just eating lollies. Just the mixed kind, that's what I got, the mixed varieties I got my wife to bring up and that, to bring up lollies. And small chop milks, you know, just small chop milks like that, just to give you that boost. But the, um, the lollies made a big difference. I mean, while lying there on the machine plugged in every day, you know, eating my lollies, gives me that extra little bit of energy. Getting up every day, I mean, it's so hard. And in my case, it was extra hard because I had a lot of problems and I was plugged in a lot. Um, but just to get up and walk down the corridor and back again, you know, and sit down. You know, two, three hours later, get up, walk around the corridor, you know, just to move, to function. Because if you don't function, I found when I did sit in the bed, if I did two or three days in the bed, I, it was so hard to get back out again. My muscles had started getting sore and things would go wrong. The more I moved, the better things got for me, you know. It was, um, yeah, 
Yeah, it's 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 different. 